Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 315. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and you can download the workbook Magic Trick 307 to 315. Hey, in this trick here, we want to talk about some limitations of the sum if and sum ifs functions uh, and see that th these functions cannot accept arrays, only ranges of values. And we'll see uh, two problems that that causes. And we'll see that in both cases, some product is a good substitute to solve this problem. Here's the setup. We have a date, a plane, and hours flown. And we want to add, given three criteria. Now, sometimes we're given criteria like this, where we have a month in one cell and a year in another. That adds a complicating factor because we don't have a month and a year column. And if we don't want to add those as extra columns, we need to get the series of trues and falses to match uh, the hours flown from this one column. That means we'll have to use the text function. Now, the text function, as we're going to use it, is going to return an array of values. And the sum ifs and sum if functions won't handle those, but the sum product will. Let's see the sum product first. Um, equals sum product. And you can see right off the bat that it says it accepts an array, array, array. So we can see right from even from the screen tip that, yes, it accepts arrays. Now, the sum product, if we put in an arrays of trues and falses to match these two criteria, another array of trues and falses to match this criteria, and then the third array will be these, it'll multiply all of them and add them together. Hey, I'm going to use double negative, open parentheses. Double negative will convert the trues and falses to ones and zeros. I'm going to use the text function of this column right here comma, and for the text function, we need to, in essence, what we're doing is we have serial numbers here. We need to extract from those and, and in essence, translate these serial numbers into a text string that will give us uh, the month, abbreviated with three letters, and the year, four characters. And the way you do that was is with custom number formatting in double quotes, MMM, year, 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 year. End double quote, close parentheses. So that will give us... Um, if we highlight the text part of this and hit the F9 key evaluate, you can see, sure enough, it took these serial numbers and translated them into these text strings that will match our criteria. Control-Z. Now we need to say to that array, is that equal to this ampersand, the shift, uh, shift 7, ampersand is the join symbol, and that. Close parentheses, because now this will deliver a bunch of trues and falses, F9. And the double negative will give us the ones and zeros we want. Control Z. When you do that F9 in the middle of a formula like that, be sure to uh, undo it with Control Z. Now, comma to the next array, double uh, negative, close parentheses. This column equals this, close parentheses. And finally, we're going to get to our third array, which are the values we need to sum, close parentheses on the sum product. Trues and falses, ones and zeros. Trues and falses, ones and zero. One times one times anything here will give us that value, and the sum product will add it. Enter, we get 2.9. Now, let's uh, steal part of this formula. I'm going to steal this text right there. Remember, that it was the translator, in essence, from serial numbers to a uh, text string that could understand that. Control C, escape. Now I'm going to come down here to sum ifs, equals sum ifs. And I want you to notice something about sum ifs, and we'll compare this to sum if without an s in just a moment. Whoa, this is a new function in 2007, and the sum range comes first, and then the criteria. That's the opposite of sum if. All right, so we're going to get our criteria, um, I mean our sum range. So we highlight that, comma, and then it says criteria. Criteria range one, I'm going to control V. Uh, and that's my text values. We, we evaluated and saw that that will actually work. Comma, and the criteria is going to be this ampersand this. Comma, the criteria range for the second one is going to be plain. Comma, and then finally the criteria two is right there. 
close parentheses. Now, um, why would we use some ifs when we have some product? Well, actually, some ifs will calculate faster than some products. So for big spreadsheets, that matter. Now I'm going to enter. Oh, it won't even let me. Click OK. And the reason why is some ifs and some if and count if and count ifs and all those kinds. See, it says range. And this is criteria range. It says range. It doesn't say array like that some product uh, screen tip did. Now, just to see if we could get it to work without this array, like testing it to see if it actually, the idea of array versus range really works, I'm going to highlight it and just highlight this range. Now, there'll be no matching criteria, but let me see if I can hit Enter. And sure enough, it does go in. Now, when, when I encountered this problem, I actually went up to the Help. I'm going to click right here and then click on the F of X and then click right here in the, the help and go up here and look. And I read these um, descriptions of the arguments, criteria range 1, criteria range 2. It says 1 to 127 ranges in which you evaluate associated data. Now this made me think and I'm like, OK, it doesn't say array, so it's probably not uh, it probably doesn't accept array, but I wasn't quite sure. So where did I go? I went to the Mr. Excel message board and posted this question. And the link is up here. And this guy, Barry Houdini, oh, such an amazing Excel genius there, uh, confirmed that, yes, in fact, uh, some if and some ifs and count ifs and all those will not accept arrays. Now I'd like to look at another example of where you might run into using some if or some ifs, and you might get an array. Now, for us, the problem here was the text, right? We have this function text, and it's expecting a value here, but we put it in, a, in an array. And so the text function returned an array. So that's one circumstance where you can get an array that would then show up in our some ifs and not let us uh, do, do it. Here's another example. I would like to sum from a different workbook. Now I'm going to control tab. I have this other workbook, and all my workbooks are downloadable. It says data for some if. And all I want to do is add product one, the sales. So I'm going to start my sum if over here equals sum if. Oh, look at that. Range criteria sum range. The sum range comes last, whereas with the sum ifs, it comes first. So the range. I'm actually going to put, watch this, I'm going to do a trick here, comma, and then I get the criteria, and then I'm going to click right there. Then I'm going to come back here, because if I do it later, it'll put it in a sheet reference. Now this range right here, I'm going to control tab to get over to my other workbook. Control tab is different than alt tab. Alt tab moves between open applications. Control tab moves between open workbooks. I'm going to say that right there. I can see my formula starting to emerge up here. Notice it's a uh, workbook reference. Come over here, comma, and now it's asking me for the sum range. I'm going to get my sum range. It's just those four right there. Close parentheses and then enter. Oh, wait a second. Well, that worked. Let's look at the sum product here. Equals sum product. Don't worry, we'll run into a mistake and we'll see that the sum product will uh, deal with it. And I'm going to put a double negative to convert the trues and falses to um, twos and falses to ones and zero. I'm going to type equals this, close parentheses. Again, I'm trying to do that little trick because later if I come back and click on that cell, it will give me a sheet reference and I don't want that. I'm going to control tab. Watch, you see the formula up here? I'm going to highlight this. And sure enough, it, it dumps it right in the right place. So then I have my uh, array one, and I want a comma, and I'm going to highlight that right there. So now this first um, array will say, is product 1 here to give me trues and falses, and then 1's and zero. So 1 times 1 will be 1, plus 1 times 1 will be 2, and so the answer will be 2. Now watch this. Here's the problem. Uh, remember, we're talking about sum if and how it doesn't accept arrays. I'm going to go back up to the, over to that other workbook, Control-Tab, and I'm going to close it. Now I'm going to come over here and double click this, put it into edit mode, and then hit enter. Oh, what in the world happened? Hey, as Barry Houdini points out um, in that post, anytime you do some if with a workbook reference, when that workbook reference is closed, the sum if thinks it's an array, and so it will not calculate it. 
anytime that workbook is open, it will calculate it. I'm going to open that back up and show you that that, in fact, is the case. I'm opening it back up. Right, control tab, and sure enough, now it's calculating. So if you have workbook references, you might want to use the sum product method of uh, criteria and summing because then it, you can avoid that a value error. And it all comes from the fact that the sum if will not handle an array. All right, and then back up to this one, the same thing we saw here, except for the array came from the text function. All right, we'll see you next trick.